G'day guys, this is Andrew Price here coming at you today with a tutorial for 3D World Magazine. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this image right here. Now we're gonna be using Blender to create this. So Blender is of course the open source software and it has built into it uh, two features, uh, the fluid simulator and the smoke simulator. Now that's what we're gonna be using to create this image here. Uh, they're two very, very powerful features. Uh, they're really great and they don't get used enough. So um, I'm hoping this uh, this tutorial will inspire you to go out there and uh, experiment and have a bit of fun with it. So before we start the actual tutorial, I'm just gonna walk you through um, sort of how this whole scene is set up just to give you sort of a, a bird's eye view of what we're gonna do. So um, essentially what we've got is uh, two simulations, okay? So we've got a smoke simulator down the bottom here and then at the top here, we've got a fluid simulator. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is create like an obstacle right there and uh, I'm gonna run one simulation to hit the obstacle and then finish it and then run the other simulation so although the two simulations aren't technically interacting with each other it will appear that way when you put them both together and um, yeah so that's how it's done so of course we're gonna be getting into the materials you know creating a fluid type liquid um, and of course the uh, the smoke materials as well turning the smoke into fire so um, all that good stuff and um, should be a lot of fun um, also might as well talk about it. We're gonna do a little bit of compositing as well. So let's go ahead now and open up a new scene in Blender. So I'm using Blender 2.6 now. So I don't know, some buttons or whatever might be different to whatever version you've got right there. I don't know when you're gonna be watching this, um, but there you go. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna take this default cube here and I'm actually gonna use this as our fluid simulator. Okay, now I want it to be resting on the grid line. So I'm just gonna, press Z and then control and then just move it up right there. Okay, so it's now just resting there. It just makes it easier to uh, reference later on. Um, now, the way the fluid simulator works is it needs an object, i.e. this cube right here, to act as the boundary box for the simulation to take place in, okay? So now you've got this cube here selected. In order to make it a boundary box, you need to go up here and click this physics button. We're gonna be doing a lot of work in here, so uh, get used to it. And then here you've got a button for fluid. So click that and then you get to choose the type of fluid, okay? So you can see there's a whole bunch of ones here. We're not gonna be using really many of these at all. Um, the one for this is domain, okay? So this is important. A fluid simulation will not run without a domain object, okay? So essentially, uh, the the appearance and the movement and pretty much all the settings for the fluid is controlled right here in these domain settings. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of ones here. I'll just walk you very briefly through the important ones. You've got the resolution at the top there, very important, whatever, um, you know, the higher you set that to, the more um, sharper and realistic the fluid is gonna look. Um, you've also got some particles at the bottom that kind of creates those little um, tiny little spraying drops flying through the air, very important. You've got the real world size, that's important. Um, anyway, so for our scene right here, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the resolution, ugh, resolution to be 220, okay? You can see it gives you the required memory one gigabyte. So it's, it's quite hefty and it's probably gonna slow down your computer a lot, but it's required to get that kind of of high definition um, looking fluid, okay? So I'm setting that as that. Uh, preview, by the way, if you're wondering what that is, that's just giving you um, whatever you can see in the, the viewport, okay? So it generates two fluids, one for the final render and one for the viewport. I never even worry about it. I just make the, uh, the viewport display to be final anyway. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never even worry about that. Um, now in the world settings, um, you've got, I think the maximum you can set the size of this be uh, is 10 meters. Um, I'm gonna use a setting of one. Uh, so essentially what that means is it's gonna calculate this as if this cube is one meter by one meter. So I think that's pretty fair. So I'm just gonna leave, um, set it as one. Um, now down here underneath generate particles, you're gonna wanna turn that on, but don't go overboard. It'll let you turn it all the way up to 10 as well, but that is far too much. I mean, I found for my example, I mean, anywhere, it, even one, that's way too much. It was just looking ridiculous with the amount of droplets flying everywhere, and it just looked messy. So I'm gonna use about a measurement of 0.25. I've even used measurements of 0.05, so you can get it really low and you can still get some decent results. Just, uh, yeah, don't get carried away. I'm, I might 
I'm going to make it 0.15 because I think last time I did it, it was a bit messy anyway. Um, anyway, now one important thing before I move on is uh, once you've turned this generate particles on, if you tried to bake it, you wouldn't see any particle. You wouldn't see those droplets anywhere. And it's really frustrating. And I only just learned this the other day, why you can't see the particles is because they will not work unless you turn the uh, surface subdivision amount up to a minimum of two, okay? I mean, I don't know why that's not like in the hover over button or like it's not grayed out until you do that. I don't know. It's just one of those annoying little things that you just have to learn and then you know about it. So make sure that's set to two if you want to use the particles. Uh, now, the other very important one before we uh, get into adding the fluid is this time here, okay? Most people do not touch this at all. They just leave it. And that is why their simulations look very, very slow. Because what it's doing is it's telling it that this simulation is four seconds long, okay? But if you look at our timeline here, it's 250 frames, okay? So 250 frames at 25 frames a second is a 10 second long animation. So what that would do is it would stretch out a four second animation over 10 seconds, making it run very, very slowly. So if you want um, real, um, would you call it real time uh, looking fluid that doesn't look slow motion, you need to make sure that this matches the length of your simulation, okay? Now, our simulation is very, very quick. So I'm actually just gonna set this to be 50 for our end frame. And um, so this one, because it's now set as 50, that's two seconds. So I'm just gonna change that to two. So. Um, the only other one you might want to do is, and you will actually need to do this, is to uh, set the baking folder. So wherever you're going to be, um, wherever you, because essentially this is what it creates. It creates these little fluid, little uh, files, which is the essentially the baked fluid files. So I'm just going to create a new folder here. I'll just call this new cache three, whatever. Drop that in there. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's like a new folder. Um, and when you finish, by the way, delete the folders that had the old fluid sims in them because they take up a lot of disk space, just so you let you know. Um, the other thing also, before we move on, um, go ahead and save the Blender file now as well, because um, especially around simulations, uh, Blender is a little unstable and it may crash on you. Don't be surprised if that happens. So save regularly and you shouldn't have a problem. Anyway, we've got the domain set up. It's good to go now. Now all we need to do is add in the fluid because if you just hit bake right now, you wouldn't see anything because this is essentially a glass box. Just imagine that as a glass box. Um, nothing's going to happen unless you add some water to it. So you can select any object for the water to be. Um, I'm going to use cylinder, okay? Because I want to make it look like it's kind of pouring out of a tap or a hose or whatever. So I'm going to scale this down, holding down control. I'm going to set that to yeah, 0.1. You can see in the bottom corner there. So it's essentially two grid squares across. And I'm going to position this right at the very top of that domain square like that domain cube, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so once you've done that, to make it a fluid object, again, in the physics panel, click fluid, and then in a type, um, for fluid, you've really got two options. You've got fluid itself, or you've got inflow. Now, fluid means that if you just if you use that, uh, when you bake it, that's, that cube or that cylinder there is going to turn into fluid, and it's just going to drop and then make a little splash. However, if you use inflow, it's going to make it a continuous pouring motion. So that's the one we're going to use. Uh, now, if you just baked it right now, you would see that the fluid is falling kind of slowly, like kind of dripping out of it. Um, in order to give it more force and more water essentially getting pumped in there, I'm going to turn the Z amount there. So that's Z like the force that it's coming out at. So if I set that to minus two, it's going to force the fluid out down the Z depth, uh, Z axes, whatever. So in a downward motion like that. Okay. So that is perfect. So go ahead and save it. Um, now, before we actually bake this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our obstacle. Okay. Because if you remember what the finished scene looks like, um, you've got it so that the water is kind of bending around. Okay. So kind of in a convex shape. Um, and then the fire is going in the opposite. Um, I don't know the opposite word for convex. Invex? Con... Uh, yeah, I'm embarrassing myself. I'm not going to try. Um, anyway, so for the fluid, what we want to do is have kind of like a half sphere so that it looks like it's kind of hitting something and it's, uh, it's going out. Otherwise, it's going to be flat and it doesn't look very good. So 
Let's bring this back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sphere right here. This is what the water is going to hit and give that effect. Uh, but I don't want the whole sphere, so I'm going to cut it down. Okay, so something about that I think should be fine. And you also, let's just hide this so we can see it. You want to make it a bit smoother as well. So go to subsurf modifier. I'm um, sorry, go to the modifier stacker and add a subsurf modifier like that. Turn the, you know, whatever, set that to one. And the other thing is because this is, you know, paper thin, like all models are, um, there's a possibility that the fluid might actually pass through the mesh. So to prevent that, I'm going to um, add another modifier and it's going to be the solidify modifier. And what this does is it adds thickness to our mesh. So very, very handy. Um, you can see that it's now essentially got two you know, levels there, whatever. So I'm going to set the thickness to that to be 0.1. Just make it nice and chunky. That's all right. And I'm also just going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, C, and then hit Origin to Cursor. And that just makes it so that I can scale it you know, in the center of that object. And uh, let's just bring back our, our domain cube there. And I'm going to drop it to be sort of not exactly at the bottom or else you're going to see the fluid hitting the bottom which isn't going to look very good so something about there should be fine and uh, again the shape of this um, you know however big you make this is going to have an effect because if you make it uh, too big then you're going to see the water kind of running off down the side and that's not going to look very good you essentially want it to fly down smash into that and then splat sideways okay so it might take you a few goes getting the right size but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of just judging it by what I did last time, but I'm guessing something like that should be fine. The fluid will kind of come out at that shape, maybe a little bit smaller. Anyway, that's all right. Okay, once you've got everything set up, if you've followed all my steps now, um, you can go ahead and hit bake. Now, I've got a, I don't know, fairly fast-ish machine, and this is probably going to take about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Now, just one other thing to note, because I can't talk as it's doing, because it might screw up the recording or whatever, and I'm just going to pause it. Um, as it's baking, you can actually move around the frames. Now, if you just set this to be, say, about frame 10 or something like that, uh, and you hit bake, what's going to happen is once it gets to frame 10, you're going to notice that all this fluids take shape, um, and you're going to be able to see the fluid effects. Once you've got it so that it's splatting into that, you know, down the bottom there, um, you can hit cancel at any time. So you don't need to bake the entire 50 frames. In fact, if you do, it's probably going to take a few hours to do that. So just watch it as it's baking. And once it gets to something that you like, go ahead and um, hit escape and, uh, and you'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit bake right now. And you'll know when it's baking because in the top... Uh, there you go. It says fluid simulation right there. So that little progress bar is going to move across. Um, and uh, yeah, once it gets all the way there, that means it's baked 50 frames. We're not going to let that happen, of course, because we're going to exit it before that happens. Um, now you should see it once it starts happening, because I'm on frame one right now, you should see this suddenly um, become fluid, but it's not happening right now. So I'm just going to check everything's all set up. Okay, there you go. So it just takes a little while to kick in. Okay, so that's on frame one right now, and you can see the fluid simulation has started because now our fluid is taking shape, and then as it goes down and continues to bake, it's going to form the rest of it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pause it now and let it finish baking. So go ahead and stop it once it reaches to something that you like. Uh, you know what, guys? I just made a big blunder because uh, you'll notice that... The fluid is passing straight through our object here because I just made the ultimate beginner mistake of not actually um, setting this object here to be an obstacle, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. In the physics panel, with that object selected, click fluid and then click obstacle, okay? That is very important. Don't forget to do that. Go ahead and bake it again now and I will see how you go. Yay! It works! As you can see, it is now colliding with our object uh, as it should. So, I've stopped this at, um, what frame is it? 10? 11? Wow, it's, uh, as you can see, it gets pretty crazy. Um, we're probably going to be using the fluid from, I mean, you can pick any of these frames you like, it's really up to you. But I think frame 9 looks nice enough, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, maybe that's too much. I don't know, because you still want to be able to see the flame underneath it. So anyway, you can sort of have a play with that later on and just choose uh, a frame that looks nice to you. 